שלום לכם. גרי יורובסקי, שוב בארץ. יורובסקי הוא הדובר רב ההשפעה ביותר בעולם, המטיף למעבר לטבעונות מלאה, לא צמחונות, טבעונות. ההרצאה האינטרנטית שלו סחפה מיליונים, רק בארץ יש לה יותר ממיליון צפיות. הוא עובר ממקום למקום, גם בארץ. הוא מרצה בלהט דתי כמעט בנואשות, והוא טוען כך: תעשיית המזון מן החי, בקר, עופות, מאכלי ים, היא הפשע הנורא ביותר בתולדות האנושות. לצד הנואים הרבים אחריו יש גם קולות מנוגדים, יש כאלה שאומרים שהטענות שלו המדעיות לא מאוד רציניות, או המוסריות לא מאוד מחזיקות, ויותר מכל, יש טענות שהאיש מטיף לאלימות, שהארגון שלו מוגדר בכמה ארצות כארגון טרור. גרי אורובסקי, בחוצה ישראל. Hello, Gary. Good afternoon. Welcome to the show. Uh, glad to have you here. Uh, quite an astonishing uh, relationship with the Israeli community you're developing, right? Absolutely beautiful. Tell, tell me about it. I mean... It's amazing what's going on here. People are listening to the speech. Uh, it's the most viewed speech in the history of Israel, which is pretty amazing considering yes. what's been going on here for the last 50, 60, 70 years. Mm -hmm. uh, I find that people who have been oppressed certainly understand oppression more than others. So I think that's why Israelis are really taking to this message of animal liberation. Uh -huh. And it's thrilling to know that people are paying attention and making massive change. Uh, try to compare it to, to what's happening in other places, like in the States or in Europe. Can you compare it? Well, it's definitely more people are paying attention here than in America. Uh, America does have a lot of vegan food, a lot of vegan mock meats, a lot of vegan dairy products. So there's more vegan food there, but more people seem to be interested in veganism here. More people are making that change. Though I understand that you didn't get permission to speak in front of high school uh, students. Mm -hmm. It's kind of par for the course, same thing back in America. It's really not different here. But it is, uh, it is sad that we can't talk to kids about the truth, about what's going on in the world, that we treat these teenagers like they're babies. They're not babies. They need to understand what's going on. And when you hide the truth from people, then you have atrocities. Take yeah, maybe, maybe, but maybe the, the right place is not in schools, but, you know, after afternoon uh, lectures and evening lectures might be. Um, so, um, who is your audience in the States and Israel, mainly? In the States? Yes. College students, for sure. College yeah. students. I only give uh, lectures to, in colleges uh, in America. Uh, I just finished doing 89 lectures in 12 states. Okay, I understand that... Uh, just a few days ago, you had a very uh, strong recollection of the last time you've been to a slaughterhouse. Yeah. Can you tell me about it? In 2007, I actually went to an auction house. This was my first time I went to a place where they auction off animals. I had been to dozens of slaughterhouses over the years, but I wanted to see this place. It was open to the public, so I did not have to sneak around and break it at three in the morning. So I walked right in. I had a camera with me. I went backstage. That day, they were auctioning off sheep and cows. Now, first of all, they had the males spray painted on their back blue to mark them and the females pink. Uh, the same markings that we've done to humans over the years with those atrocities, mm -hmm. which we can talk about later. Yes. What really was disturbing to me and saddening to me was the first time the animals didn't recognize who I was and why I was there. Over the years, every time I went somewhere, it was like they knew I was there for them. And I'm like, I'm getting footage. I'm gonna show people what's going on and I'm gonna share this with the world. Well, this was the day that they were just terrified about what was going on. And they turned their backs to me and they were shaking and shivering. And as they looked back, it was like they were saying, what are you doing to me now? Where are you taking me now? Why are you stealing me away from my family again? Leave me alone, you two-legged devil. Just leave me alone. And here I am going, wait, no, I, I'm going to help. I'm just showing people what's going on. And they didn't recognize me. And this is where my anger emanates from when people don't want to listen to the message. This is why vegans get so militant, because I don't want to be a two-legged devil to the animals or to anybody. I don't want to be vicious and mean and callous and vile, but as a species, we are so callous towards the animals, that's how they view us. 
And it brings to mind a, a quote that made me go vegan way back in the day from a bishop from England, uh, William Ralph Inge, I-N-G-E, in an 18th century sermon, this man said that we have treated our cousins in fur and feathers so horribly that beyond a doubt, if they ever formed an organized religion, the devil would be depicted in human form. That broke my heart the day I read it, and it still breaks my heart today because, again, they must look at us like we are devils. We cut things off their bodies, their horns, while they're fully conscious, off the cows. We cut the beaks off of hens. We rip the testicles out of baby pigs when they're born. We torment them, put them on concentration camp trucks. We send them to slaughterhouses. They know what's going on. They're aware. They're conscious. They smell death and fear and blood in the air. We cut them up into pieces. This, ad, this, this stuff has to stop. Over and over again, once and again, uh, you um, go to uh, ways of, of, of describing that we are used to, you, to, to, to hear concerning the Holocaust. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, pretty sensitive around here, but you, you stand for it. Yeah. Uh, isn't it over the top to, uh, to uh, use the Holocaust? The animal Holocaust was happening long before the Jewish Holocaust, during the Jewish Holocaust, and it's still happening today. I find it over the top that the Jewish Holocaust is compared to the animal Holocaust. Because when you compare numbers, we're talking about six million Jews, and if you add up the other six million gypsies and blacks and Catholics and mentally retarded people, we're talking 12 million people were killed by the Nazis. In one year alone on this planet, 60 billion land animals, 90 billion marine animals are tortured, tormented, and killed in the world's most massive holocaust. That's just in one year alone. In America today, 30 million land animals will be tortured and killed. Today, in one day? One day alone. Okay. That is a massive holocaust. And Jews don't own the term Holocaust. I know Jewish people of like course, to think it's course. our term, like black people yeah, like to think the that point. they own slavery. And I have to, say, I have to admit that the numbers are more than impressive. But uh, the moral argument um, is, is quite uh, uh, difficult because uh, one of my colleagues here asked you, were you to, uh, to decide, uh, Ilana Dayan asked you that, mm -hmm. and I listened to your um, answer, and I want to go back there. Mm -hmm. She asked you, if you had a three-years-old baby and a three-years-old puppy, that you have to save one of them, would you choose? I think it's a horrible question to be asking somebody. And then I asked her back, would she save a black baby or a white baby? Would you save a Palestinian suicide bomber? Or would you save a flea? No. Because we act like human life is valuable, and it's not especially when you talk about mass murderers and rapists and Hitler and Himmler and Stalin and Idi Amin and Slobodan Milosevic and Muammar Gaddafi. I mean, is anybody going to save Muammar Gaddafi's life? How come people didn't come to his rescue when they pulled him out of a sewer and took a knife and shoved it in his anus? Nobody cares about Gaddafi, Osama bin Laden. This is so false. We are all speciesist. We think that animal life isn't valuable, and we falsely believe that human life is valuable. If I can further explain yes, how, how, how unvaluable mm -hmm. human life truly is, do you know that if you took humans off this planet, the extinction of humans would benefit everything that exists, the animals, the forest, the air, the water, the mountains? We are completely not special to this planet. If you removed ants, this is how special ants are. The whole ecosystem would collapse without ants. And I know you've been following the news with bees. If the bees disappear, everything falls apart. This is how special and valuable bees are to the world. Where do we get off saying that we are valuable when all we do is destroy and torment and think that we're superior and we dominate others? And this is why you wished, you said you wish that people that work in slaughterhouses um, get slaughtered themselves or something very sure. bad happens to them? I, listen, I wish evil on evil people all the time. And any sane per person would do the same thing. Was anybody upset when the Nazi hunters went and tracked down so Adolf people Eichmann that and were, brought him back here and so killed him? So people that work in slaughterhouses are party in the streets. <laughs> are like Nazis? Sure. To, the, to, to their victims, they are. 
really doesn't matter to what you, I think. To you. To me, yes, but most importantly to the victims. The victims don't see the people that killed Jews any different than the people who kill cows. And people that wear uh, furs should be raped. I wish, listen, I certainly don't wish that they hit the lottery. I don't wish that bags of money fall from the sky and boxes of lollipops land in their laps. I wish evil things happen to evil people, but I want to be clear about this. Yes. I hope rapists get raped. I hope child molesters get raped. I hope all the evil people in the world have evil done upon them so maybe they can, for the first time in their lives, understand what it means to be treated like nothing. I don't understand why my wishes are worse than people's actions. Mm. People that eat meat, dairy, and eggs, people that wear fur coats, that support vivisection, that do vivisection, I tell you are why the most violent I tell you why it's important. Planet. I tell you why it's important, because maybe someone hears you right now and will take action which will be, which will be violent, which will be a murder, a killing. Okay, two things. Do you know when I made that statement? 1997. Okay. It's been 16 years and not one person has raped a woman in a fur coat because I wished it. All right. Okay, so let's not get into people taking my words okay. that literally. It was my wish. It was my fantasy. And by the way, I also wrote three other lines about how rapists should be used in experiments, how rapists should be tortured and killed. How come people don't talk about those things that I say? Yeah. Okay. And let me be clear about something else, right. and if I can be graphic. Okay. This is what I think should happen to rapists, even somebody who rapes a woman in a fur coat, if that ever happens. I think that his penis and his balls should be seared off with a cuticle remover, slowly. Then I think two skewers should be shoved into their eye sockets, dragged into another room. Then I think that their penis and their balls should be dipped in diarrhea and puke. They should be given the option of eating that and then they can save their lives. And if they do eat it, then I want to take a gun and put it between their eyes and shoot them and said, I was just kidding. This is what I think should happen to rapists. Why so, do I have the feeling that you enjoy <laughs> yourself speaking about this violence? Listen, because people feel the same way I feel. Nobody disagrees with my position on violence. They just only disagree with who I propose to be violent for. Okay. See, everybody thinks it's okay to kill Nazis on behalf of Jews. Okay to kill a white slave owner on behalf of a black slave. But nobody thinks it's okay to kill a chicken murderer on behalf of a chicken. So that's the issue at hand, is why do we devalue the life of a chicken and why do we value human life so Maybe much? Maybe because nature is full of species killing other species. Okay, it's also full of species not killing other species. 75% of the animals on this planet are herbivores. Of course. But why do we try to justify human behavior based on lion behavior or shark behavior? It's also unfair because nobody else wants to do anything else that lions do. You notice that convenient argument? We just want to do what the lions do when they eat antelope. No, the, the argument is it might be quite natural to okay. kill animals. Maybe you should do it in the most humane way possible mm. and like uh, a not humane exaggerate. Holocaust? What? Like a humane holocaust? See, I don't we can't know. throw I... this word humane out there when we're talking about rape, torture, and murder. You can't put the word humane next to it. Doesn't work like that. That's not how the world works. Like if, let's, let's take for example, uh, some, some farmer far away, maybe far away in time, in the past, grows an animal and uh, the animal has uh, a wonderful life, grazing and enjoying itself. And when the time come, comes, he kills the animal in, in, a, in, a, in, a, you know, in a nice way, the nicest possible. This is not rape, this is not Holocaust, this is the way of life. Okay, so if I go and meet a woman at a bar, I buy her some drinks, I bring her some flowers, I take her back and put on some soft music, some Teddy Pendergrass, and we dance and we look in each other's eyes and I slip her a date rape drug and rape her. Is that humane? Why not? She didn't feel a thing. See, because the act of rape is evil, okay? The act of murder is evil. You can't do it in a nice way. Okay, we have to stop thinking that there's a nice way. In fact, you know what the nice way to kill is? Not to kill. That's a nice way. That's a nice <laughs> way. Is it working? Do you, think, do you think that the world is progressing um, in the direction you want it to, prog to progress in a, in, a, in a pace that's efficient? Not quickly enough for the victims, but sadly, as you know, change is slow. 
It took 400 years to convince white people in America not to own blacks. You can see why this is taking so long. We can't even treat each other kindly. You can see why we have a difficult time treating chickens and pigs and cows and mice and insects with kindness. But as I bring this up, I wanna let people know that the, the path to peace is through veganism. It is by, we, we, can, we can find peace on this planet by eradicating speciesism. Because this is the first form of hatred humans are taught. Racism, sexism, anti-Semitism, heterosexism, these are branches of hatred. The root is speciesism because that's the first form of hatred humans are taught. When you're a kid growing up, you're taught, hey, be nice to the dog, be nice to the cat. But that cow, that chicken, yeah, he doesn't count. Just kill them, screw them. Uh, be nice to the horse. Uh, be upset when somebody poaches a rhino. Uh, be upset if somebody cuts the fins off of a shark. Hey, but that uh, turkey, hey, kill him. It's Thanksgiving. It's a holiday. So the kid is confused growing up. So when we get down to talking about discrimination and why it's wrong, where it comes from, it all stems from that somebody looks and acts differently than you. If you taught a child growing up that, hey, just because that chicken looks differently than you do, that chicken has every right to live. That spider has every right to live, just like you do. How is that child going to grow up and look at a different person who's a different size, shape, and color? How is that kid going to look at that person in hatred with violence? Speciesism, by eradicating that, we can bring peace to this planet. We have to take a break here. Short one. Let me add the shoe. שלום לכם ותודה שאתם איתנו. אנחנו עם גרי אורובסקי. הוא לא אוהב שקוראים לו הגורו של הטבעונות, אבל... כך נהוג לקרוא לו, שנמצא שוב בארץ ללא מעט הרצאות, שרובן ככל שאני מבין מלאות, ההצלחה שלו בארץ, הקשב אליו בארץ, שדיברנו עליו בחלק הראשון, הוא בהחלט יוצא דופן גם יחסית לעולם. I want to ask you, Gary, about your concentrating on the moral argument. Might be that the uh, health or medical argument in not eating meat may be more effective, or the ecological argument of the meat industry uh, spoiling this planet might be more effective, but you make it a point to concentrate on the moral argument almost solely. Why? Because we claim to be moral beings. We claim to know right from wrong. We claim to be compassionate. And as long as humans make these claims, I'm going to be in everyone's face and say, you can't do it halfway. You can't pick and choose who to be kind to and when to be kind. You're kind across the board or you're not. And I'm confused as to why we always have to go back to the table of justice and beg the majority of people to stop harming and killing somebody else. We do this over and over again. Can we just cut to the chase and say that everyone on this planet deserves fair and equal treatment? People who eat meat, cheese, milk, and eggs are on the wrong side of justice. People who don't support animal rights will not win this battle. Injustice cannot live forever. It never, it lasts a long time, unfortunately, for the victims, but injustice cannot live forever. Can you be friends with someone who's not a uh, vegan? I am. My best friend in the world of 35 years isn't vegan. No. No. And your family, your close family? I'm not close with my family at all. They're not vegans. A uh, different relationship that I have with them than I do with Darren. Darren's honest about it. See, the problem that I have is when people lie about why they harm animals, that animals don't think, that they can't feel, that they're not smart, that I need my protein, that we can do it in a humane way. Darren looks me in the eye and says, Gary, you know damn well animals don't deserve this treatment, and so do I. I'm too lazy to switch. What do you want from me? Now, I despise his laziness. I despise everyone's apathy. But at least it's honest. At least you're not trying to come up with a stupid excuse to harm and kill animals. Because when people start lying, that's when I start getting angry. So I want to eradicate the lies and get down to the issues at hand. But if someone were to, to, to convince you that the ecological argument or the health, the medical uh, argument uh, may be much more effective, why don't you use it? Because the issue is going to be ethics to me. I, S health issues are selfish reasons. I'm trying to make people unselfish. The reason why we're so mean to animals, because we think we're so special. That's selfish. I'm trying to make people unselfish. I'm trying to make people be altruistic. Now, here's what I love about the health 
benefits of veganism. When you're being altruistic, you should never expect anything in return. Right. When you're vegan, you get a lot of great things in return. Your health, you're good to the earth, because let's face it, the worst form of environmental destruction is animal agriculture. That's right. So there are some great benefits and kickbacks, but without a clear conscience, without mental health, we can't have physical health. So if you're gonna focus on the physical health aspects and miss this aspect, you're still not right. You said you, you, one of your best friends is not vegan, is, is, is a carnivore. Yeah. Uh, so you can be friends sure. with, with someone sure. who's, who's a carnivore. I, I just wanna further explain this. It, what humans do to animals is completely evil. I won't mince my words on that. Yeah. Individually, I mean, virtually nobody kills themselves, so, uh, kills animals yeah, you know, yeah, themselves. Yeah. So I know most people aren't evil individually. Most people can harm somebody else. If you put a knife in my hand when I was growing up, even though I ate meat, said, hey, Gary, go kill that cow. Well, you must be crazy. I'm sticking that knife in somebody else's throat. So we pay other people to do it. So I want to reach those people that are passively evil, that passively take part in this, and that's the masses. As a boy back in Michigan in the States, of a nice Jewish family, right? Mm -hmm. um, was it something that could have told me that uh, as a grown-up you'll be doing the things that you do? Not a chance. Not a chance? There's no, th this is what's so bizarre about this I, whole I journey. I don't mean only the, 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 the meat eating. No. Yeah. Temperament wise. Oh, uh, well, I, I always had an authority problem. <laughs> Surprise. Yeah. I, I always liked to buck the system. I was always kind of a rebel. I didn't like rules especially when the rules were silly or unjust or they didn't make any sense. So were you one of these uh, youths that get in troubles? Oh, every day at high school. Every I was in the principal's school. office every single day. Absolutely. You want a funny story, too. Yeah. I, was, I was such a troublemaker, too. In our high school growing up, uh, we had to sign up for our classes, yeah. but we were told over the four years you have to make sure you do this amount of math, this amount of English. Well, I despise math. So I never signed up for any math classes. I took extra English classes. I'm a right. speaker, I was always fascinated with words. So two weeks before graduation, Miss Jackson called me in and said, Gary, I was going over your, your record. You haven't signed up for any math classes in four years. I can't let you graduate. And I said, you wanna keep me here for another year? That's fine with me. Now mind you, I'm the troublemaker in the yeah, office every day and she looks at me up and down. Just get out of here, size the sheep. Get out of here. <laughs> Only I can get away with something like that. So, uh, and, yeah. and eventually you find yourself in jail as well. Yeah, well, you know, after when I first found out about the animal issues, I, of course, looked up other revolutions in history. I saw what Gandhi did, that he was going to jail and getting arrested. I saw Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks and uh, Cesar Chavez. They were all getting arrested for their cause, doing civil disobedience. So I thought that was the path uh, to help animals become liberated. So that's what I went out. And did too. Well, you, did you did you free some animals? I freed 1,542 mink from an animal concentration and camp that's why, in that's why you went to jail? That was one of the jail. That was the first major one that put me on the map. Uh, things went badly for me that night. 540 mink did escape, and they were never going to be tortured again. They mink have their necks broken, by the way, manually on mm. a fur farm. Uh, I was apprehended that evening. It was Easter Sunday, 1997, when I did this. I thought that was a good day to go help somebody out. Uh, I was charged with B&E, and I was sentenced to six months in a maximum security detention center. And even those prisoners knew that it was crazy that I was there, because when they started asking questions, they saw me on the news, and they said, what are you doing here with us? You freed some rats, and you're here with us? <laughs> I said, no, no. I also caused $2.1 million in damage that night and put the, put the make murder out of business permanently and we don't tolerate economic sabotage in our society because we don't worship God. I saw a stat that 96% of the population believes in God. I don't deny that. I just wish they worship God because people worship the root of all evil. People worship money and that's why all this violence takes place too. Capitalism. It is the most profitable business on this planet since the beginning of time, animal slavery. Nothing comes close. Not cars, not gasoline, not oil, not computers. Nothing compares to the amount of money being made off the backs of animals, literally. Do you believe in God? Yes, I do, absolutely. I will talk openly about God. I don't believe in organized religion, but I absolutely believe in God. I believe in the Garden of Vegan.
Oops, the Garden of Eden. I believe yeah. and thou shalt not kill. I believe Genesis 129, God's first law, is I give you seed bearing plants for food. I believe that God created humans, animals, and the earth. Therefore, God is inside humans, animals, and the earth. Therefore, if you murder humans, animals, and the earth, you are murdering God. I noticed that religious people love to worship things that we created in God's name. The Bible, the Koran, um, stars of David, the cross, but nobody worships anything that God created. Animals, kill them. Kill them right now. Those horns on that cow, cut them off well, right now while that cow is fully conscious. That's, that's, the water, pollute it. The air, pollute it. Every, the forest, cut it down. Anything that God made, we destroy. Anything that we made in God's name, we worship. So my condemnation isn't about God. It's about what religious people do in God's name. Well, I'm um, very glad you came to our studio. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me.